everyone at the Hop Hog Library. It is Miss Karen again from A Time for Kids. Welcome back to another Sunday Stories. So Sunday Stories is always a great time to sit down as a family together, listen to some stories with a theme, and then I always give you a craft idea that you can do at another time. So I hope you guys are ready to have some fun with me tonight. We always begin with some music and movement. We want to move around a little bit, get our muscles working, and then we want to sit down for some quiet story time. So today, everybody, our story time is all about commotion in the ocean. So we are in the month of July, so it is the summer, and hopefully you guys are getting an opportunity to maybe go down to the beach, to go see the ocean. You can listen to the ocean and hear the waves crashing. You can feel the sand under your feet. You can feel that warm sunlight hitting your skin. And you can also smell the salty water and taste that salty water from the ocean. So the beach is a great sensory learning environment. We can use all of our senses, boys and girls. We can see things, we can smell things, we can taste things, we can hear things, and we can touch things all while we're at the beach. And what that does, grown-ups, is it helps to build those neural connections and it helps us to form memories. So, boys and girls, we are talking all about commotion in the ocean. So if you guys are ready to have some under the sea fun with me, let's get ready, ready to wave those hands. We are gonna sing hello. Everybody wave your hands to say hello. Now, let's take those hands. We're gonna stretch them way up high. Wave your hands high in the air. Now, can you take those hands, bring them way down low like they're under the sea, wave them down low. And then we're gonna take our hands, we're gonna wave them super fast, wave them fast like they're fast, like they're swimming by. And now let's wave them really slow. Maybe they're moving slow like a turtle. All right, boys and girls, let's keep those hands waving. We are going to sing our hello song. And as soon as you learn the words, jump on in and sing with me. That makes it all the more fun. We are singing hello, 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 and how are you? Let's get ready to wave and sing. Here we go. Hello, 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 and how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. And I hope that you are too. All right, you guys, let's all sing together. Hello, 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 and how are you? How are you? I'm Can you fine. say I'm fine? I'm fine. And I hope that you are too. All right, so this time, okay, boys and girls, I'm going to sing, sing the hello part. part. Can you, you guys sing, sing I'm fine? fine? So when I say how are you, you sing back I'm fine. Let's try it. Hello, hello. Hello and how are you? Your, Your turn. turn. I'm fine. Good job. Good. Okay, Alright, let's switch it up. This time you guys sing hello to me and wave and then I'll sing I'm fine. Let me hear you. Hello. Hello and how are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. And I hope that you are too. All right, now we're going to practice with waving with all about different body parts and in different ways. You so let's shake, take those you hands, wave. you guys. You stretch first. them way up high. Pretend you have two crayons in your hands. And we are drawing a rainbow Hello. above our heads. Hello. From Hello. side to you side, you stretch your you arms like there. this. I'm fine. I'm fine. And I hope that you are too. Okay, should right, we try this? This time we're going to pretend we're swimming. Like we're under the sea. Let's take our arms. And Hello. let's wave like we're Hello. swimming. Are we are working those muscles, I'm getting fine. warmed up. I'm fine. And I hope that you are too. This time, instead of waving right, with this your time, hands, let's make those moves you really wave. small, everybody. Can you wiggle your fingers like this? What kind of voice would you sing that if you could just find this finger. little pinky um, on the end of each hand Hello. and see if you can bend it all Hello. by itself. Hello, and how are you? I'm fine. I'm fine, and I hope that you are too. Okay, okay. here comes a silly one. And now what we want to do is we want to find our elbows. So boys and girls, pretend you're making muscles like this. These are our elbows. Okay. Let's you turn our arms this way back. and move our elbows hello, up and down. Hello, hello, and how are you? You got it. I'm fine, I'm fine, and I hope that you are too. Okay, let's see. This you time, my friends, find your head. 
We are going to oh, wave good. our heads like this. Okay, here we go. So Hello. wave your head up and down like you're nodding your head. Hello. Hello. Right. I see you there. And I hope that you are too. All right, you guys, this time we're going to get a little bit silly. Do you think you can wave with your tongue? Stick out your tongue? Can and let's see if we can sing with our tongues waving to each other. Hello, 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 and how are you? So silly, isn't it? I'm fine. I'm fine, and I hope that you are too. Oh, and before because we also you said you could shake, shake somebody's hand to say hi to them. So turn around to the person next to you, put your hand out, give them a squeeze, look them right in the eye, make some eye contact, and give a nice firm handshake. And then let's all take our hands and let's clap. And I hope that you are too. Good job. All right, boys and girls. It is always good to see you guys and to say hello when we see people that we know. Now what we want to do is we want to bring some movement into the program before we settle down for a story or a few stories. So what we want to do is get all our sillies out, shake all that energy out. And the way we do that at a time for kids is with our train song. So everybody, let's stand on up. Grown up siblings, everybody in the house, jump on a board. This train song is a fun one to do together. We are all going to take our arms and move them around and around and around just like this. And then we're gonna chug a chug around in our house. So we're moving our arms, then we're moving our feet. And at different points, I'm gonna have you stop the train and we're gonna do some big moves together. All right, my friends, let's get ready. Let me see those wheels turning. We're going on a train ride. Here we go. I even have my whistle. All aboard. All right, let's move those arms and the feet. We're getting some exercise. Here we go. Right through the town and the countryside. And where it goes, nobody knows, but it always ends up here. All right, let's stop the train and do a conductor. All aboard. So boys and girls, take your arms and give big waves. All aboard. And everybody, let's say all aboard. All aboard! And it always ends up here. Now we move those wheels and we go around again. Through the town and the countryside. And where it goes, nobody knows, but it always ends up here. Hold it up. Let's do whistles. Woo! Arms in the air and pull it down. Woo! Let's switch to the other side to our both arms. Woo! And then we the go back to the conductor. All aboard. And it always ends up here. Let's go around again and learn another step. Through the town and the countryside. And where it goes, nobody knows what it always ends up here. Hold it up. Let's do the people. Let's squish those fingers. So we're working these tiny little muscles. Ready? And let's pull the whistles again.
switch to the other side. Last whistle. Woo! And show me that conductor. All aboard! And it always ends up here. All right, last time around. Here we go. Pull our energy out. Moving those arms, moving those feet. But it always ends up here. And here it goes. Nobody knows. But it always ends up here. Great job, you guys. Give yourselves a round of applause. All right. Here at a time for kids, we always like to do that train song because what it does is it works our muscles, gets us moving, works on some sequencing, and builds up all of those skills together. All right, you guys, now that we worked so hard and got some exercise, let's have a seat. This is Sunday Stories. We are getting ready for some stories. And again, I said today it was all about commotion in the ocean, and that is the title of our first story. All right, boys and girls, I love this story, and it is called Commotion in the Ocean. And as you can see, there are some ocean creatures here. And these books are great, I think, because they use rhythm, rhyme, and repetition. And boys and girls, the colorful pictures in this book are amazing. All right, so if you listen closely, you're gonna hear that the words rhyme. So here we go, ready? This is called Commotion in the Ocean. So boys and girls, get in a comfortable spot to listen to some stories. We have three books to read today. So let's get comfortable and listen to some Sunday stories. Commotion in the Ocean. Here we go. There's a curious commotion at the bottom of the ocean. I think we ought to go and take a look. You'll find every sort of creature that lives beneath the sea swimming through the pages of this book. There are dolphins, whales, and penguins. There are jellyfish and sharks. There's the turtle and the big white polar bear. But can you see behind the wrecks and in between the rocks? Let's take a look and find who is hiding there. So if we look around, we can see little parts of animals, big tail over here. Let's turn the pages and find out who we see in the ocean. Here's a crab and a turtle. The crab likes walking sideways and I think the reason why is to make himself look sneaky and pretend that he's a spy. The turtles. We crawl up, we crawl up the beach from the water to bury our eggs on dry land. We lay a whole batch and then when they hatch, they scamper about in the sand. So the turtles lay their eggs on land and then the little babies make a mad dash into the ocean. Do you know what that is? The dolphins. The wonderful thing about dolphins is hearing them trying to speak. It's not, how do you do? As I'd say to you, it's more of a click whistle squeak. Angel fish. So boys and girls, if you have a look in a fish tank, Right, sometimes when you go to the libraries, different libraries have fish tanks. You can see the striped fish that look like this. Those are angel fish. Hello, I'm the angel fish darling, the prettiest thing in the sea. What a shame there are no other creatures as gorgeous and lovely as me. And sometimes we see this guy, the jellyfish at the beach. The jellyfish just loves to jiggle, which other fish think is quite dumb. She knows that it's not all that useful, but jiggling's lots of good fun. You can jiggle like a jellyfish. The shark. Dun -dun 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 -dun. I swim with a grin up to greet you. See how my jaws open wide? Why don't you come a bit closer? Please take a good look inside. You don't want to get too close to a shark. A swordfish. Look at that big, long sword at the top. I love to chase after small fishes. It keeps me from getting too bored. And then when I start feeling hungry, I skewer a few on my sword. The octopus. Having eight arms can be useful. You may think it looks a bit funny, but it helps me to hold all my children and tickle each one on the tummy. So the octopus has eight legs. The stingray. 
At the bottom of the ocean, the stingray flaps his wings, but don't you get too close to him. His tail really stings. There's his tail. The lobster. Never shake hands with a lobster. It isn't a wise thing to do. With a clippity clap and a snippity snap, he would snip all your fingers in two. And in the deep sea, look at that. It's dark down in the deep sea and there's all different creatures down there. Miles below the surface where the water's dark and deep live the most amazing creatures that you could ever meet. There are fish of all descriptions of every shape and size. Some have giant pointy teeth and great big bulging eyes. Some of them can walk around and balance on their fins, but the strangest fish of all have glowing whiskers on their chins. Look at that. The blue whale. There's no other beast on the planet as big as the giant blue whale. He measures a massive 100 feet long from his head to the tip of his tail. Look at how big he is. And on whales, there are these little tiny creatures called barnacles. Look at that. We're just a bunch of barnacles and all we do is cling. We know it's not that glamorous, but it's our favorite thing. Do you recognize that? The walrus. Our bodies are covered with blubber and our tusks are incredibly long. We're grumpy and proud and we bellow out loud to show that we're mighty and strong. The penguins and the polar bears. The penguins. We waddle around on our icebergs, which makes our feet slither and slide. And when we get close to the water, we leap with a splash off the side and they slide right in off the iceberg. And the polar bear. Deep out in the Arctic, the mommy polar bear snuggles up with all her children since it's very cold out there and she's snuggling with her little polar bears. What a lot of creatures we have seen beneath the sea. What a lot of funny things they do. Some of them might lick their lips and eat you in one bite, and some might want to swim around with you. You never know. The dolphin's very friendly and the lobster's very fierce, but the shark is the most dangerous by far. Can you name the other friends we've made along the way? See if you can tell me who they are. So do you guys remember some of the creatures that we talked about in the book? The lobster, the octopus, the shark, um, a jellyfish, the dolphin. We talked about barnacles, a swordfish, an angelfish, and all of those creatures underneath the sea. And that was my story called Commotion in the Ocean. So there's a, a lot of books by this author and this illustrator. You could check them out. They all rhyme. They have colorful pictures. Another great one is Rumble in the Jungle. But this one here, Commotion in the Ocean, talks all about our creatures under the sea. All right, my friends, we are now going to read another story about creatures under the sea. And this one was not mentioned in that book. Do you guys know what this is? This is a seahorse, right? And this is by Eric Carl, so this is special, right? Um, and so we are talking about Mr. Seahorse. And the illustrations in this book are really cool as well. And boys and girls, this book points out that in some animal species, it's not the mom who gives birth to the babies and takes care of them. It might be the dads. So let's see what Mr. Seahorse is all about. Mr. and Mrs. Seahorse drifted gently through the sea. Mrs. Seahorse began to wiggle and twist this way and that. It's time for me to lay my eggs, she said. Can I help, asked Mr. Seahorse. Oh, yes, thank you, said Mrs. Seahorse. And she laid her eggs into a pouch on Mr. Seahorse's belly. I'll take good care of our eggs, said Mr. Seahorse. I promise. As Mr. Seahorse drifted gently through the sea, he passed right by, look at that, a group of trumpet fish hidden in a patch of reeds. So in this book, we can turn the pages and the trumpet fish are hidden in the grasses or the reeds. 
And when we turn the page, we see the trumpet fish more clearly. So sometimes when you look around, you might have to look a little more closely to see what's there. But before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Stickleback? Asked Mr. Seahorse. Delighted, replied Mr. Stickleback. I just built a nest and right away, Mrs. Stickleback laid her eggs into it. Now I am taking good care of them until they hatch. Keep up the good work, said Mr. Seahorse and swam on his way. As Mr. Seahorse drifted gently through the sea, he passed right by. Do you guys see anything? Let's clear it up a little bit. A lionfish hidden behind the coral reef. So look at this. The coral reef is a great place for the lionfish to hide. He's all disguised. But when we turn the page, we see the lionfish. But before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Tilapia? asked Mr. Seahorse. Mr. Tilapia couldn't answer. His mouth was full of eggs. Check that out, you guys. I know, I know, said Mr. Seahorse. Mrs. Tilapia laid her eggs. Now you are taking good care of them until they hatch. Mr. Tilapia nodded his head. You might be very happy. You must be very happy, said Mr. Seahorse, and swam on his way. As Mr. Seahorse drifted gently through the sea, he passed right by. What do you think he doesn't see right now? Hmm, let's turn the page and find out. What do you see? Several leaf fish hidden among the seaweed. So here was the seaweed. It was hiding the fish. And when we turn the page, we see the fish. But before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Curtis? Asked Mr. Seahorse. Perfectly fine, replied Mr. Curtis. Mrs. Curtis laid her eggs and I have stuck them on my head. Look at that. The daddy carries the eggs on his head. Now I am taking good care of them until they hatch. You are doing a good job, said Mr. Seahorse, and swam on his way. As Mr. Seahorse drifted gently through the sea, he passed right by. What do you think this is? Hmm. Let's turn the page and see if it clears it up. A stonefish hidden behind a rock. So he's a stonefish because he looks like a rock. So he hides behind the rock. That's a good hiding spot for him. But before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Pipe? Asked Mr. Seahorse. Couldn't be better, replied Mr. Pipe. Mrs. Pipe laid her eggs along my belly. Do you see all those eggs along his belly? Now I am taking good care of them until they hatch. You should feel proud of yourself, said Mr. Seahorse, and swam on his way. But before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Bullhead? Asked Mr. Seahorse. Tip top, replied Mr. Bullhead. Mrs. Bullhead laid her eggs and the eggs hatched. Now I'm babysitting. You are doing a fine job, said Mr. Seahorse and swam on his way. That's a lot of babies to look after, isn't it? The time had come for Mr. Seahorse babies to be born. Mr. Seahorse wiggled and twisted this way and that. At last, the babies tumbled from Mr. Seahorse's pouch and swam away. So the babies came out of his pouch one baby turned around and tried to come back into the pouch. Oh no, said Mr. Seahorse. I do love you, but now you are ready to be on your own. And look at that. And the little seahorses swam away and they were on their own. And that is a great story, boys and girls, because it shows how all the daddy fishes take care of their babies. All right, so that is cool. And if you want to check this book out along with any other books from Eric Carl, this one is called Mr. Seahorse. And you can go to the Hop Hog Library and check them out. All right, boys and girls, we are going to do another quick story. And for this one, 
we are going to play some music. So this is a great book, and this one is called Octopus's Garden. Do you see the octopus? And this is actually a song by the Beatles and Ringo Starr in particular. So this book is written by Ringo Starr, who is a famous Beatle, and this book is illustrated by Ben Court. So it comes with a CD in the back of this book, and we are going to play the words to the song as I show you the pages. So boys and girls, this is gonna have a little bit of music with the narration, so it is really cool. And again, this one is called Octopus's Garden. Let me get my music set and we will be ready. All right, here we go. This is Octopus's Garden. I'd like to be under the sea in an octopus's garden in the shade. Check it out, that looks so cool. He let us in, knows where we've been in his octopus's garden in the shade. Doesn't it look so cool? Ask my friends to come and see. Check it out. Wouldn't you ask your friends to come? Garden. I'd like to be. You can dance around. Look at that, they're riding on the sea turtles. Too, under the sea. They're all in the cave. Can you dance with an octopus? Now they're with the whale. That is one big whale. They are meeting all these creatures under the sea and they are in the octopus's garden check it out look at that the coral reef all of those fish and they're swimming with the octopus and swim about the coral right so happy. Nobody, nobody under there to tell us what to do. I'd like to be under the sea in an octopus's garden with you. Wouldn't that be fun if we were in an octopus's garden together, you guys? And that's my story called Octopus's Garden. All right, and an octopus's garden, of course, is under the sea where he lives. All right, my friends, since we talked all about under the sea, I wanted to give you a craft idea. All right, so all we do at a time for kids is we try to do some preschool readiness skills. So I always like to give you a craft idea that you could take away with you. All right, so what I wanted to show you today is a craft involving an octopus. All right, boys and girls, so all you would need for this craft is a piece of paper, and I chose blue so that it looks like it's under the sea, and then a piece of paper, and um, it, either a whole piece of paper, or if you have one of these cupcake liners, we are going to create an octopus, just like the guy under the sea. All right, so all you will need to do this is a round piece of paper, a circle cut out, or if you have a cupcake liner, you could use that, and then one piece of paper that I fold in half like this, I'm going to cut it down the middle, and then what I want to do is to cut eight strips of paper. So if you want to make a colorful octopus, you can make it all different colors, but I can show you that you can make this with just one piece of paper. So we're going to cut eight strips out of this half of the piece of paper. So if you didn't have a cupcake liner, go ahead and use this other piece to cut out a circle for the octopus's head. All right, so what we want to do is to just cut eight strips of paper. One, two, three, four, 
five, so we're working our counting, six, and we're working our scissor skills, seven, and eight. And these don't have to be perfect because an octopus is not perfect. All right, you guys, then what I wanna do is to come in with some glue. So what we wanna do is to draw eight lines to put his legs sticking out. So we got one, two, three, four, and then we do five, six, seven, eight, and then some glue in the middle. So I kind of drew an octopus out of glue like that. And then what we do is we put our pieces for his legs onto the paper. So I'm just gluing these along. And if you have glue marks that are sticking out, that's okay, our glue dries clear, right? So we're just going to create our very own octopus. And then we can even do some more counting with this and make it more of an educational craft because if you have cereal pieces at home, you can take cereal pieces and we can put eight pieces on each of the eight legs. All right, so what I did was I just glued eight octopus legs down there, and then I'm gonna take my circle or a cupcake liner, whatever you have, and I'm going to glue it right down in the center. Okay, gonna push it down, working my muscles just like that. All right, and that looks like an octopus. I can come in with a marker, give my octopus a nice happy face, right? Because octopus look like they would be really happy in their garden under the sea, floating about, wiggling and squiggling. All right, just like that. And then what you can do is if you have cereal, you might have colorful pieces of cereal like that, or if you have just little pieces of cereal like this, like Cheerios or something, you can then take your pieces of cereal, and grown-ups, this is a great activity to do with the kids to help them with number recognition, all right? And you can just put eight dots or draw a line. Sometimes it's easier if we just draw the line. And then boys and girls, we can count out eight pieces of cereal and line them up on each of the octopus's leg. legs. So I have one, two, three, four, Five, are you counting with me? Six, seven, and one more makes eight. All right, you guys. So what I did here was I put eight pieces of cereal. I have eight legs for my octopus. And what this does is it becomes a cute preschool craft that reinforces um, scissor skills, gluing skills, which develops their fine motor skills. And then we brought in some counting with the eight legs, and then you can keep reinforcing that by adding eight pieces. This is a great activity, grown-ups, to just set up at the kitchen table. If you need to get stuff done in the kitchen, set them up. They can create, they're working with food, you would be working with food, maybe getting your uh, meals together. And it's kind of like um, making a situation of parallel play where you're both doing uh, your own work, but in the same shared space. And that really helps to build kids' um, attention spans. All right, you guys, I hope you had fun in our Under the Sea Commotion in the Ocean program. We're going to end this program with a song. So if you have any musical instruments, feel free to get them out. We are going to sing and dance to Skidamarink and I Love You because I always end my programs by singing I Love You. I think it's a great way to end the story time. So let's get ready. We can sing, dance, clap our hands. And we are all going to sing Skidamarink and I Love You. So if you know the words, jump on in and sing with me. Here we go, you guys. I hope
hope you guys had fun in our Sunday stories. Again, I am Miss Karen from A Time for Kids. It is always a great time when it's a time for kids. We'll see you next time. Good night, everybody.